Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm an IT professional working in Orange County, but I've spent the last 10 years driving up to Central California on weekends to help my family turn what was a tore-up cattle ranch into what is now shadow-run vineyards and winery. My parents just announced that in five years they're moving to France, and I've got that much time to grow the business, become a winemaker, and figure out how to run this place myself. Aaron Hunt with Shadow Run Vineyards. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the tasting room and surprise my dad. He's working behind the counter today, and I just wanna see if he's willing to give me a tasting and uh, if he'll do it on camera. So, oh, and if Sammy wants to be part of it. Hey, Sammy dog, look out, look out. Let's, I see, Aaron, I see your hard work. Close the books for March. Would you have any interest in uh, pouring for me, doing a quick, concise tasting? A quick, concise tasting. With me as the customer? Do you get any money? Uh, well, I gotta taste the wine first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are we uh, starting with here? Well, we're pouring two whites and four reds. All right. The first of the whites is called Melissa. It's a blend of Viognier and Grenache Blanc. Uh, of course, Viognier is a very big white, very floral on the nose, lots of stone fruit flavors, just a big, bold Rome varietal. Blending in the Grenache Blanc tames it down and makes it into a much lighter, softer summer sitting wine. This is a super easy to like wine, which explains why um, it's almost sold out. So how are we doing on that? Yeah, we are almost sold out. I think we should make it through the summer. I hope we make it through the summer. We'll see, but we've been selling so much more of all our wines lately. I'm a little bit nervous. We might hit the bottle. Well, no, we, there's nothing we can do. If we run out of Melissa, we run out of yeah. Melissa. We'll just be pouring the other whites. I love wine. Mm. All right, white wine number two. White wine number two. Uh, this is called Grace. Yeah. Um, our white wines are named after young women friends of the winemaker. Um, Melissa is named after her violin teacher. And Grace is named after the young woman who is the cellar rat at a winery where we originally made our wine before we had our own facilities. So uh, Melissa, very sweet, very light, Grace, very much. A little more robust. Cell rat, yeah. yeah. Both very pretty girls, yeah. but, uh, yeah. but different. So so, you we're, we're very feminist here. Yes, we are. I wonder <laughs> if it has anything to do with uh, having a female winemaker. I think it starts there. It starts so there we will smell the cork and make sure we're not pouring uh, wine that's been contaminated by uh, an infected cork, which happens in about one to two percent of wines using real cork. Which is why we're considering alternative closures like caps and synthetic, but I think you lose so much aesthetic value. Yeah, it's hard to, to justify going to a restaurant and paying $50 for a bottle of wine and having the server unscrew a cap or pull out a plastic cork or something. Nobody likes that. It's not so, a hundred percent state Viognier, uh, definitely big floral nose, lots of perfume, uh, stone fruit flavors, maybe mm. honey. Uh, yeah, I get I get uh, orange citrus on the nose, but but definitely a, a bigger, heavier, oilier wine. Some of my foodie friends they prefer this wine, but it's, it's there's more going on. You know? There is a lot more going on. It's a big mm. white. People aren't always used to a big white. Boy, you really... Did you figure out this was, just an this was just an excuse to start drinking before noon, actually? Note the uh, vampire. Right, right. You don't know what's coming over that hill. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, a very unusual blend. It's a blend of Malbec, Syrah, and Petite Syrah. Of course, Malbec is a Bordeaux, and Syrah and Petite Syrah are Rhone varietals. So we have blended Bordeaux and Rhone varietals, which in France would uh, not be permitted. But in Paso, you can do whatever you want. And some of the blends that we're making and other wines mm. we're making are very unusual and have turned out very well. This, is, this has been very popular. Very good.
it would be a major froggy faux pas. But, and not that Creston isn't very serious about its standards, uh, but, uh, but, but this sort of blending is allowed. Um, this is, you know, with this wine, you're starting to get into our, our estate stuff and our, our inky dark stuff and more our style. Yeah. Definitely, even the Malbec uh, turns out really dark in our vineyard. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but the Malbec, the Syrah, the Petite Syrah, all very dark. The Petite Syrah, especially just black. You know, it, it could be our winemaking style, it could be the, the extended soak, it could be a, a slow fermentation, or it could it be, be a terroir. It, it's the terroir. It just everything that comes out of the dirt out there is inky dark. Um, this is a beautiful wine, and I, I just wish we would have made more of it. Um, and I'm excited that we're going to make a lot more next year. And and it's it's a nice kind of entry point into our two our two big boys, our two kind of hardcore, inky dark extracted berry pie. Our serious wines. Our very serious. We're serious people. So we just started pouring our 2012 Estate Syrah mm -hmm. because we've sold out of our 2011 <laughs> Estate Syrah. The 2011 Estate Syrah was a silver medal winner at the San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition this year. Um, the winemaker expects that the 2012 will do as well or better, so we'll see how that works out. Well, it, it blows me away, you know, we just bottled this and the flavor is already pretty available. I mean, I can tell you just open this. It's you know not the way it's going to taste in two hours, but it's That's still true. it's still really nice. Um, and congratulations on selling out of the 2011. Cellar door seems to go pretty quick. Maybe it's the name. Um, I, uh, I I jacked the name Cellar Door from um, the movie Donnie Darko, just because I thought it was cool. And um, and also you notice of uh, some of the other fonts, you uh, you get this nice cursive, like an eclipse, that's an cursive. Since I named this one, I asked that we put it in block letters so people could read what it said, which I think is a critical part of at least the off the shelf uh, retail experience. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people come in and remember uh, Cellar Door from Donnie Darko. That is, that is what, well, you know, it's funny, it wasn't my choice to have names for our wine. I thought we'd just call it Shadowrun Syrah, Shadowrun Petite Syrah. But it's funny, people remember the names, they like that. And yeah, they, uh, I guess I, I agree with you. I, when we first started making wines, I was mm. not a big fan of, so nice. of naming them. That one, people are, it's going to be a crowd pleaser because it's so available and fruit forward. And, so this up. is uh, our gold medal winner. This is the 2012 Petite Syrah Eclipse. Inky, dark, uh, very big wine, loves food. Uh, this is a wine that uh, will last a couple of days. I opened it late yesterday afternoon around 4 o'clock. I, I did uh, vacuum seal it last night when we closed, but it should be tasting very nice right now. Yeah, this is this is, I think, the best wine we've ever made. Um, the first time I got to try it was after, I forget if it was Thanksgiving or Christmas, but everybody else had passed out. It was midnight. I got some quality time with a half bottle that was left when I was drinking it thinking, holy moly, we've done it. I mean, it was, I, I'm just really proud of this wine. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's got that same intensity, but it's also got a little bit of a candied quality, which I think makes it a little bit more commercial. And it's something we've always tried to pull off, the balance between making wine that we love, which is big and extracted and a lot of fruit and a lot of acidity and a lot of um, just everything, but in balance. And for a lot of people, that can be like a, mouth, a mouthful. They feel like they just you know, took a big bite of alcoholic berry pie. And so we want to balance the success of extracting those qualities. Oh, I forgot to mention tannins. You know, it has to have tannins that stand up and that provide structure. So blending that, in, that intensity of winemaking with the ability to, to be appealing to somebody who just walks in off the street and maybe isn't used to big extracted wines and is just looking for something that's easy drinking. And if you can do both, if we can have that great quality, if we can, I think we can be appealing to, uh, to people who aren't also winemakers then you've, you've really done it. And, you know, and obviously we know some people who have, and I, and I think this wine. Well, the 2013 that's in barrel right now is, I think it'll be every bit as good as this one. So our Petite Syrah is definitely turning out to be our flagship mm. wine. Well, that was lovely and quick. 
it's, it's satisfying to make good wine, but it's also really gratifying to have people like it and buy it and tell their friends and want to see it in restaurants. So. Definitely. Getting all those fruits wise. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you, sir. Sure, so that'll be $5. I, I think, um, I, I apologize, that, can I pay it to myself? <laughs> uh, I think, uh, uh, I apologize for making you open a couple of bottles, but I know it tastes really That's good. all right, because, uh, you know, we'll, we'll drink it. Okay. okay. All right, very good. We're, we're going to want, we're going to wander around the vineyard and do some stuff okay. out there. We'll go find any holes. All right, fair enough. All right, you and Sammy have fun in here. We will, we always do. Right. Sound asleep. Very good. Good job.